Welcome to Timberborn, a game about a beaver civilization. Today we're going to be looking at getting started. We're going to be doing the foxtails. This is the team that you start with or faction that you start with. And I'm going to have a look. I think we're going to go islands, thousand islands. It's a quite a large map. Should we go for easy? Let's go for easy. No, let's go for normal. We'll go for normal. Start as we need to go on. Go for normal. I'm giving this game a quick run through on easy mode. So uh, I should be prepped and a basic understanding on how it works. So this is Timberborn. We've got a bunch of beavers and obviously we need to survive because a drought comes in and all the water Water will disappear uh, it's always helpful to find out where the water source is you can see all the end of the maps here this is where the water is going to go off and the water source is a big lump of rocks so we don't know ah here we go so this is the water source up here so that is interesting i've got to work out which way this is going to flow so that i can sort of dam this water up so that i can have some in order to keep myself alive okay looks like we want to try and dam this bit if we can down here cross here so we get this water to flow round us and round us here but yeah dams are interested in this this is what we got to do dams are here uh, and all this stuff is currently locked by science and we need to unlock science in order to unlock more stuff we'll get a log pile down here and these guys will build this because obviously there's a little bit of resources there straight away it doesn't take much to build it then we need uh, lumberjack and he will be in here path everything up paths are very helpful in this game so this is your district you see this little blue border here this is our district border we can extend our border if we run a path in so now the border goes even further so the idea obviously is to try and get as much of this land as we can and try and utilize it as good as we can now obviously these are all dead trees and they're dead because they're not watered and they're not watered because they're out of range of water this means this land is kind of ideal for building houses and stuff on things that we don't necessarily need green fertile land for which keeps the green fertile land free so that we can use it or farming or growing trees and stuff food is the next important thing as you you see here we've got a load of berries and we can actually get like a little forager and he can come in and he can forage for a basic food source for now which will be our berries and that will hopefully keep us alive until we're able to get our farm up and running as you see down here we've also got a little bit of tutorial in the bottom right corner it tells us what we need to do i am skipping a little bit too far ahead so let's just do what the tutorial is asking once two lumberjack flags we have completed that and we just gotta wait for it to be built and it will be built soon enough and uh, let's hit, let's kick the speed up a little bit hurry things along then he's built that bada bing bada boom connect the lumberjack flags mark trees for cutting so to mark trees for cutting you click this here click the mark trees for cutting button and then you can mark all the trees for cutting i'm gonna mark all of the dead ones for cutting just simply because well they're never gonna grow again so if we can cut them and get them out of the way that'll be great whereas these guys that we've got down here these will continue to grow they should do that's the theory if you kind of let them grow they will grow so we'll just kind of cut a few and then basically get all of this cut up here we can extend the path by and i was going to extend the path there but we can't we've got some berries in the way so what we're going to do is ask all of our lovely beaver friends to uproot those berries which hopefully they should do we need a water pump this is one of the if not the most important things for our little beaver faction without water we will struggle so i'm going to pump the water pump here and we will also need and the tutorial tells us to water storage everybody's sleeping at the minute it's night time so up in the top right hand corner you've got a little timer here that's got 16 hours and you've got a little clock this is our work time you can actually increase the number of hours that they work for it starts at 16 hours which is crazy imagine working a 16 hour shift no thank you but yeah you can increase and decrease that malarkey there so by connecting up to the stairs you see now this lumber flag now has access to this upper level not all of it you can extend usually by adding a path in let's just see no okay so the lumber flag is limited by a certain range anyway so what we will do is we'll whack another one up here and then we can pause one down here so we'll free up the worker and then when he's done his do we'll just remove it anyway because that other flag will be fine where it is so that worker will probably run around here get into here and then it's like okay cool start munching away at these trees slowly builds up our log pile our water pump is finished build a gathering flag which we've already done this is what i said i skipping ahead so we're getting our berries coming in and now it says we want to build a farmhouse now our farmhouse is going to be key going to be where we're going to get pretty much all of our food where well, is where we're going to get all of our food from so what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete this path am i no i want to keep this path because i want to go across here so our farmhouse wants to utilize as much green area as we can so i'm thinking if we can put it this way and then we've got all this green area around us that we can hopefully gather up just sleep another night through we'll get this built we'll hurry them along we'll get this built pretty sharpish my guy's making a good job of clearing up all these broken logs up here that's good and there's also another natural staircase just in here which will be good it means we don't have to build any staircases which is pretty handy right now so our farmhouse is built and now it wants us to plant some carrots plant carrots we go into plant crops grab our carrots and we just 
Put them down. I want 70 carrots. And this should be about it. Yeah, six, nine. There we go. 70 carrots completed. So now it wants us to build various different things. A log pile, which we've got. Small warehouse and a small water tank. It wants three small water tanks. So we'll do water first. We'll get these three small water tanks because they are pretty important to us and our little beavers. We'll keep them close to the water pump so that our little beaver friend hasn't got to run miles to fill them up. So that's those three. A warehouse. So we go to storage and we'll grab our small warehouse and we will put our small warehouse. Do, 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 do. We'll put it over here opposite the farmhouse. So obviously each thing takes various numbers of logs and we've got two guys munching down the trees and getting us some logs. They're doing what they can do just as it goes dark. The water is filling up inside the water tanks and it's going down because our beavers need to drink. They have wants and needs as well, like most things. We can see that by clicking on a beaver. It tells you what its basic needs are and what its nutrition's like, uh, social life and everything else. And well-being. The well-being, we want to try and get this as high as we can. Another morning and they are getting on with life, which is what we need to do. We want these guys to hurry up and cut down these trees. Do we have any unemployed beavers? No, we don't. I was thinking about getting under the lumberjack flag and getting the unemployed beavers to do it but there isn't anybody unemployed so kind of pointless at the minute we need shelter in order to get some babies and then doing so will also increase our beaver output so to speak but yeah i've got to get a balance it's one of those games where you do need a balance between food and water production as well as your population else otherwise you end up in a mess where you've got too many beavers and not enough food never good our warehouse is constructed which is going to be handy they're just going to pile all the resources in here and now we get to build some lodges these are our houses so you got two lodges here a mirrored lodge and a normal lodge. Literally the only difference between a normal lodge and a mirrored lodge is which way the door faces. So if you see this, the door's on the right hand side. If I go to the mirrored lodge, the door's on the left. I can stack these buildings on top of each other. However, if I do that, I need a way to get in. I need a staircase. A staircase is currently 70 science and I do not have anything producing science. We're going to follow the tutorial. So we're going to stick at it. We're going to keep it nice and steady. And I'm just trying to think where we should be putting these buildings. Maybe if we kind of build a row of them around here somewhere or if we just deck out out the back out here i think that might be a better option come out here yeah we can do that can't we and as long as we path these guys together oops, there we go so then they can all be built it does however mean there is only one way round and that's this way round the path goes but that doesn't matter beavers aren't picky and uh, night time's here so we'll let these guys get some sleep and we'll be back just grabbing some more trees telling the guys to cut down the more trees so that we actually do have something to help us keep building along and what you got here in this district center these guys when they've got nothing to do these are our basic workers they're sort of our builders they're the odd job guys they're the guys who do every job that they haven't been told to do if somebody's employed at the lumberjack flag that is the only job he will do if somebody is at the district center he is our builders he is our transporters he's the kind of dude that does a little bit of everything helps to remember i did actually need six lodges i only had five built so just squeeze one more in there and then they'll be doing good how are we doing for food so top left corner up here we can see how we're doing for food and it currently has berries the carrots carrots are currently growing their growth is is 55 ish percent it will take whichever was planted first but also if we look they tell us that they also do take four days to grow we've also got potatoes that take six days to grow now these things need to be grilled which is another sort of job in order to do and then we've got like wheat and water-based farming material so wheat is useful for making bread obviously if you have wheat you have to grind it down and you have to go for a process in order to do these things right now we'll get their guys moving and we'll get them building these lodges because once these are built hopefully it's going to let me do some science like i say i don't really want to jump ahead i know i can i know sort of what i'm doing obviously i want to get you guys through this as well so we see what's happening it is worth noting that i am on the experimental build of this game so there's currently two games running side by side if like it's two builds running side by side there's the sort of official release which everybody kind of plays and then there's also like the experimental build where they just bring in a few extra buildings and various different tweaks just to see how they go so i am on that one which is why you might not have seen these water-based products before same way you might not have seen this aquatic farmhouse or any of the beehives and stuff like this before these are on the experimental build anybody has access to this who owns the game just got to know where to go for it but there we go build an inventor this is where we get our science now this is the juicy bit this is where all the good stuff comes from knowledge is power so now that we've got all these lodges as well you notice we've got some free space we've now got some children on the way which means we're going to get some more beavers which means we're going to get some people who are unemployed which is going to be good for business because it means we're going to get some workers and our workers can well 
do work. Now, what I'm thinking, there's two things that we can unlock first. A levee, which is really handy. This is like just a big block, so a wooden block that literally just stops the water. Or we can go for a dam. A dam is expensive. I mean, we already have this unlocked, but it is expensive. It's 20 logs to build, whereas a levee is only 12. Dams have a little bit of a leak, meaning if the loads of water builds up behind it, it can kind of just seep over the top, so you never fully block anything up. Whereas a levee totally blocks something up. Our beavers are happy. They're well being level is level five that's always good so now what's it saying after done the inventor we've got to build a water wheel a water wheel is what is going to give us power now tricky one a water wheel is going to be so helpful it does give us power but and it's quite a huge but we need water to be flowing all the time so if i'm looking at this like the source of the water was up here somewhere obviously the water's going to flow down i need to try and work out which way this is flowing because if i put a water wheel in the wrong place which is highly likely the water is going to escape so the water is going to go down this way down this way so if i build a water wheel and i put it here because this is quite a small tight channel which would be good then i've got to think about directing the water around this way so that i don't lose all the water out the edges of the map out here it can come down here it will come down here and it will go off of this and out here etc etc but i've just got to kind of work out the best way to manage well manage the water really so what i'm thinking yeah if i go here we'll build this then i'll have to have a look see how i can get across the island in order to maximize my usage here because i would like to put two side by side because they have an output Let's see if we can show you i have no idea what the unit of measurement is there so these have an output of something that i don't fully understand hp per cms no idea what cms is if anybody else in the comments has a clue please let me know but yeah so this is going to output power and it uses a cog system which obviously you can see here with the blue cogs and we can extend that using all these fancy little bits here and here and here and here so that will be helpful to get us power so it just shows you that this game is just a civilization builder really simple really nice actually i quite enjoyed it so a little bit of management no stressful micromanagement as such but you've obviously got to be aware of, of what you're doing just how it goes and how it impacts so we'll get this water wheel built see where we get to and see how our little island looks when we get there how many unemployed have we got so far none nighttime cycle again everybody goes for a drink get some food and just chills out in the night time a little bit of r and r get some more trees are cutting down get some more logs are coming in get this water wheel built there we go 75 percent. we do have a power wheel so a power wheel is beaver driven but it gives you less output of power than the water wheel obviously the water wheel uses the water now the beaver powered wheel is handy because as long as you have a beaver in there you are constantly producing power so obviously that means that at night time when the beaver goes to sleep you're not going to have power but most of the other time you will and it'll come in handy when you get a drought because when you get a drought this water wheel will stop spinning so that clock in that you hear it tells us that there's a drought turning in three days which is never going to be fun next bit on the tutorial is saying build a lumber mill this is a lumber mill and it says power the lumber mill now anything that's next to the power this is the cog of the power this is next to it is going to be powered so i could put this lumber mill here then put another lumber mill next to it and next to that and next to that and they will all be powered from this one source because that's how the power works in this game pretty handy so i'm going to plonk that right there so that we kind of use as much area as we can and then he will be able to be powered and this guy is then going to be able to produce logs which will then help us build other stuff too hopefully we'll be able to get the forester by then the forester is going to be really important to us because after we've sort of obliterated all these trees we've got to wait for them to grow like these little saplings coming through or seedlings or whatever they want to call them but our forester is like proper wood management so he's going to be able to say okay you want some trees we'll grow you some trees and yeah they just kind of manage it a lot better than just randomly sporadic placed stuff which is always good it's always good to have actual trees and you can see in the forest so you different trees that you do get you've got a birch you've got a pine you've got a maple and you've got a chestnut tree and they do give you extra benefits a birch tree is literally just logs when it's nine days to grow pine tree we get pine resin that can be used for something else 12 days to grow maple gives us maple syrup that's 30 days to grow that's like a month jeez but that does give us eight logs and then you've got a chestnut tree which also gives you chestnuts and four logs but that is 24 days to grow so there's a nice balance between all the trees there the longer they take to grow the more logs you get from them as well as all the little extras as well with the little syrups and the pine saps and stuff because that's now built right next to that wheel we see how we've completed both 
Build the lumber mill and power it. Sorted. This is where it's saying get the forester built. Now, currently, we don't have the science. We've only got 48 science. And we need 60 to unlock it. So we can't really do anything about that other than build another science inventor man. But we also currently don't have any free beavers. We could actually go into the district center. We'll do that. So we'll build one more science. Put him out here somewhere. Build him near the houses. Set him up priorities. So you also have a construction priority here. So if you are panicking and you need to things to be built in almost a specific order you can set the priority of a building so they'll get this inventor built what we'll do is we'll take a worker from the district center and we'll make him an inventor simply because well at the minute we don't need much more to happen in the district center because we just we don't have any free beavers at the minute the kids are going to grow old eventually and they will fill out the rest of the housing i think i'm going to get the forester to plant around here where this sort of original forest was before so we will clean that up a little bit as well we'll take out all these stumps because they're just going to get in the way of the forester's fields when we plant the forester's fields you don't want random stumps in there you want to be able to control what you grow a little inventor is finished so i've taken a guy out of the district to put him in there which will give us sort of twice as much research but obviously these things take a little while so they do build up now in the meantime waiting for that to happen we have got enough science to unlock the forester so we're going to unlock the forester so you've got an area of influence of what he can tickle around with oh the more towards the steps we go the more his area behind it goes now i don't want to do that really because that is just dead area there's no water there i put him here you see how he can maximize both the top and the bottom bits sort of where the trees were where all the beavers are so he's going to be able to get all of this stuff up here and then all of this down here now the only issue there is he needs logs doesn't he he needs seven planks so we've got to activate that find a, a worker so some of the kids have grown up now so they need things to do so one of them has gone straight into producing planks which is absolutely fantastic because that's just what we need right now 0.3 days until the drought comes in so i imagine when we wake up the drought will be here so the drought has started what that means is if we try and find the source again you see how there's no water there now it's all stopped and this is going to be tricky because we're going to need to work out how and where the water goes and what stops where first anything that's low level will hold water anything that's kind of the same level or high level will obviously the water will disappear yeah like this this isn't good so we're going to lose a lot of stuff here but it's going to help me try and determine where i need to dam oh damn so this little pool here this is going to stay and this little area where i've got my water wheel is going to disappear oh my days it's gone then all of that is going to dry up like this and this is not good for us because what this then says is our crops will die in 1.9 days and we've got 2.7 days to wait until the water comes back and it's the same with the trees trees die out if they don't get enough water uh, they're gonna take 13 days to dry out there that's okay so what i need to do here is dam so that we get water i need to sort of dam around my little buildings which is probably going to be tough because i'm going to need to put sort of dams and levees in here I'm going to have to put dams and levees this side, but I'm also going to have to put dams and levees this side, but Mm, because this is a low point this is always going to hold water this is where things get tricky 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 a levee is 120 a dam is already available so i'm going to want to build some dams around here just to hold some water and in order to do so i need to get a path and i need to get some stairs now stairs are 70 and i do not actually mind spending that on those because as far as i can think they're going to be vital. I need to get down here to dam this water so that we can hold on to it. Because if I can't hold on to this water, well, everything's going to die. And that means our beavers will too. Yeah, carrots are going to be dead in 0.6 days. And the water's not going to return for another 1.5. So half a day to die and one and a half days for water to return. This is this is where water management comes in and it does get quite stressful. So what I'm going to say is I wish to dam this point somewhere here. That's what we want to do there. Now, the beavers can walk across the top of these, actually. If I grab a path and go... Bloop, 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 bloop. The issue that we're going to have is the district has a range. So this district marker here is our range. So we're going to be stuffed if this is too far out of the range. We can sort of extend the range, like I said, using the paths, but it's not a guaranteed of how far it's going to go. So uh, things get tricky. 
things do get tricky. We are going to get the water back in 0.2 days, though. As you see, the problem is we've got no water. We've got no food. We are clinging on for this water to return. And it is returning now. The drought has ended. So this water is going to start funneling back down. But obviously, our crops are all dead. All the carrots are dead. The dried out, they're dead. All the berry bushes are dead. Well, they're not dead yet. They're just dried out. They'll come back. But it means we don't have any food at the moment. And we also don't have any water at the moment. So it's a little bit of a panic station. We've just got to hold on. Hope that the water gets back in time. Here it comes. Everybody's hungry. See, now you got the problem where everybody's starving. Everybody's super hungry. Like hunger. Ah, and they are all starving. Which isn't good. By adding the dam and getting the path on top of the dam, it has just extended the district a little bit. So I'm hoping that it can come all the way out. But we'll see what happens. All we can do. We've just got to hope that we can actually get some food. Not too sure how promising it will be. Extend the old path to the stairs that we can't do. Excellent. And we'll also get another lumber marker. Get another lumber jack in there so that then they too can help us out. We'll rip up this stump. Rip up this stump. We'll rip up this stump. Just need to get these dams built so that we can try and retain some water. It'll be fine because the water will go. So this is what I'm saying. I like, see there's, there's a gap at the top of the dam. So that's where water can overflow. So water will sort of build up behind the dam that height. Then it'll just chill there and it'll hold there. So the forester is now built. It wants us to plant some pine trees. So we do that by going into here. Grab our pine. Now he wants us to plant 20, which is fine. Plenty of them. Done. And then that is the end of the tutorial. Good luck, it says. Now, I'm also going to plant some birch trees as well because these are slightly quicker growing. I'm also going to plant a couple of maple trees because these take longer to grow, but they give us more logs. The sad news is we are losing a lot of workers through hunger, but we can also plant blueberry bushes as well when we've got the forester. So we'll do that and we'll hope for the best, but no, more and more people are dying and that's not good. We literally don't have any food either, so everybody's going to die and it's not going to be good for us at all. Find out what happens in the next episode of Timberborn. Hopefully we don't lose everybody because that'd be very, very disappointing. Take it easy guys, we'll catch you in a bit. Bye.